Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to look at the top five gotchas in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, I picked the top five things that I keep hearing from people when they're using Premiere Pro. Now, these are not problems with the program. This is user education. This is people having to understand certain ideas and properties and methods and operations in working in Premiere Pro. First one up, sequence settings. What's right, what's wrong, what's the easiest way to make sequences and the dreaded uh, 4K uh, 16 by nine problem. Let's go have a look. Okay, so I've got some footage over here and an easy way to see if you're mixing and matching your footage, if you go to this little flyout menu and turn on the preview area, you'll get a better idea of the frame size. So you can see this is showing me 4096 by 2160. Uh, the same with this one. And if we go down a little further and click on that one, that's 1920 1080. Also notice that this drone footage does not have audio and this footage does have audio. So you can see the icons are different. So it gives you an idea of what you're working with. If you need the extra room, you can turn that off and slide this over here until you see video info, and you can also move that to the left. So we, we're working with different footage over on the left-hand side. I'm going to close my sequence and have no sequences open. In earlier versions of Premiere Pro, you can't drag from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, but you can right-click on the clip and choose new sequence from clip. And that's going to create a sequence the exact size of that particular clip. This is by far the easiest way to work in Premiere Pro, especially if you're a YouTuber and you're shooting DSLR and you're outputting HD and you're going to, to YouTube. That's the easiest way. Professionals don't want to do that. That's fine. They've, they understand that. Now, notice I had two different sizes. I had HD and I had 4K, and I chose to make a sequence of the HD version. That's the smart way to go, unless I'm trying to make H, uh, 4K. You're not gonna turn the HD into 4K without it looking a little bit soft. So instead of working in 4K, I'm working in HD, and then I'll drag my 4K footage inside. If you go to the sequence settings, you can see the sequence settings right here, 1920 by 1080. And it's changed my editing mode uh, to AVCHD 1080p. And if I want to, I might be able to change some of these settings. If I go to custom settings, now you'll notice I can change everything, including the frame rate. So if I wanted to go to 2997, I could and click OK. Now again, it, it's going to warn, warn me that the previews are going to change. Click OK, I don't care. Now earlier versions of Premiere Pro, you can't change the sequence settings. So if you do want to make specific sizes, uh, frame rates, frame sizes, you can create a new sequence. And I've got uh, a tutorial on how to make sequences. But I wanted to show you the easiest way just to make that sequence. Now let's bring in one of those 4K clips. So I'll drag that 4K clip in here. And if we go to that clip, you'll notice that it's not, it's too large for the screen. So if we zoom out to, let's say, 25% and select this, you'll see my frame size is large. And one thing that you might try to do is to right click on this and choose set to frame size. And I've got a tutorial about set scale versus set, but let's try set to frame size and let's go back to fit. And you'll notice that we have black bars. The reason is 4096, which this drone footage is, which is from my Dutch digital dude, Ronald Schwanenberg. So thanks very much again. Um, this is not 16 by nine. Ultra HD, which a lot of people could get confused with 4K, and the reason they do is um, if you see a lot of televisions for sale, you say, buy this TV, it's 4K Ultra HD. Those are two different things. Ultra HD is 3840, 4K is 4096. Ultra HD, which is uh, 3840, is 16 by nine. So 4K is just a little bit bigger. So if you go to the effects controls, you'll see Premiere Pro has set this at 
46.9. And if I change that value here to something like, something like 50, then I can fit that in. So now I'm putting 4K in HD and sizing it correctly. That's important. So that's the number one area. The other thing I get a lot of questions on is mixing and matching frame rates. Frame rates are probably different on here, are they? I think they are. One's 59, 96, one's 25. So just put them in there. Again, if, if you're from a professional environment, then you probably have a more restricted choice of, of uh, the sequence settings and the media that you're using. But if you're a you, YouTuber, do what I do. I just throw everything into a sequence and output it and I let Premiere Pro take care of this. Okay, so that's our sequence settings. Next up, number two is you can't, when you drag in a video, you can't drag in the video and the audio or just the audio comes in or just the video comes in. This is an easy one to fix. So let me, all right, let's get rid of this media here and we'll work on bringing in new media. I want you to notice that when I click on a clip on the left-hand side, you'll see V1 and A1 show up there. If I click on the drone footage that doesn't have audio, A1 disappears. The source patching is directly connected to the media. If you double click on this and load it into the source monitor, then the same thing applies. So if I double click on the, the drone footage, you'll notice the A1 is disappearing. So source patching here is directly connected to our footage on the left-hand side. Track targeting are these over here. So if I wanted to make sure my stuff was going into V1 and A1, and I wanted audio and video, then it, first of all, I have to select a clip that has both of those, and then I can drag it in. I'm going to turn this off. This is telling me the clip doesn't match the sequence settings. Remember, I went in here and I tweaked these settings myself. If this is annoying you, you can just turn the always ask off. You can also turn this back on in the preferences. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to keep my existing settings. So there they show up right there. Well, let's say that accidentally V1 got turned off in our source patching. Look at this. Even with track targeting turned on, the source patching does not work. This is a huge problem for some people. I get emails all the time, probably once every other week. How come I can't bring in my audio? How come I can't bring my video? The source patching has been turned off. There's, you can't change this. This is just the way that Premiere Pro works. So let's go back and turn V1 on, get rid of that. We have to re-import that. Now we can bring that in. So that is a big one right there and it works from the source monitor up in the top too. So when I double click up on the source monitor and load my footage, you'll see that V1 is showing in here. If I double click on my audio and video footage, V1 and A1 are showing up. So that is an important one. That's number two. Next one is, I can't hear my audio. I brought in my video in a file, the video file has video and audio, place it on the timeline. You can hear video, you can hear audio for a, a minute and then you can't hear it anymore. Well, Premiere Pro will conform audio files when it feels that it needs to, to have better performance. So I'll bring in a large, a long file. And notice this down here in the bottom right, generating peak file for that particular file. And then it will draw the, the, uh, the waveform for that file. While it's conforming, whenever you, you can't hear something, look down in the bottom right for a progress bar that you'll see moving along. If this is a really long shot, maybe you shot a, an event where you've got one hour of video, two hours of video, you drag that in, Premiere Pro is working in the background. It lets you edit it and drop it in, but sometimes you're gonna have to wait, look down there at that bar. If you just brought in a whole bunch of videos, it's going to be doing all of that in the background. If there's nothing moving in the bottom right-hand side, that means it's finished conforming and drawing the peak files, the wave files, and now you should be able to hear that. So. That's another one that you'll see um, a lot. The next one is selecting just the video or just the audio and linking and unlinking. And boy, oh boy, if you know this next tip, it makes life a heck of a lot easier. Let's go have a look. Now, let's say that we wanted to bring in another clip here. 
right at this point, and we want to drop it into V2 and all the way down here to A3. Okay, so I'll drag this clip here, and if I hold the Shift key down, I've, I've locked my video to V2, but notice as I move up and down here, I can position the audio wherever I want. So a lot of times people will actually drag the two in or drag them into another area and drag it in. Just add the shift key after you've positioned the, the first clip. So if I wanted the audio to be there, move my audio, then add shift and then move the other clip. Okay, now the next one is, is I mean, it, along the same lines is clicking and selecting clips and deselecting clips and moving things around. If I wanted to move this clip here, up to V3, you can select it either by option on, on the Mac or Alt clicking on it. See how when I click on it, it unlinks? Or you can click on this button here to unlink selection, but I like to do it this way. Click on the Alt Windows Option Mac and then click. Now I've just selected this. Now when I drag it up, I can position it up. What you can't do is if I want to move this with the arrow keys, which you can do once something's selected, if you hold down Option and Alt and hit the up arrow, then you can move it. But notice as I moved it up, I got rid of that clip there. So it overrides that, that clip there. And if I lock that track, I cannot move it up into that area. So let me just show you what I mean here. I'm, I'm Alt, Option, clicking here, and then, then still holding Alt and Option and moving this around, okay? So you can do that, but any time you put this over top of another clip, so if I wanted to move the audio down to here and then move it back, it's going to leave a hole. So you can protect tracks, you can manually drag, and, and there's lots of ways of working in the timeline. I wanted to show you specifically about selecting and moving things around um, the easiest way. Next up, and, and I get this uh, from folks, is I'm changing the effects and I don't see what's happening. Well, there's a good chance the playhead is in one place and the effects are changing a clip in a completely different place. Let's go have a look. So let's change the scale property of this clip uh, below. And if I click on this clip below and go to my effects and change the scale, you'll see nothing happening because it's actually happening to the clip below. If I move my playhead to this clip, sure enough, it's affecting the clip below. So that is very important. You have to make sure you've got the right clip selected when you're editing. The newer versions of Premiere Pro do have a sequence preference where you can choose selection follows playhead. Now, wherever I move this, the playhead is going to select that clip, but it's also based on track targeting on the left-hand side. It's selecting whatever is under the playhead. Um, this you can turn on and off. It can be useful for folks if they are working with um, effects. All right, so there you go. Those are the top five gotchas that people have. They're not problems with Premiere Pro, they're problems with learning and understanding. And a lot of people get tripped up on these five things. Okay, hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more like our wonderful folks on Patreon, then join us over there as a patron. We really do appreciate everybody that's supporting us. Thanks so much everyone for all the support you give us here on Video Revealed. We really appreciate it. My name is Colin Smith and it's my job to make you look the best. Mm -hmm.